what is good? <laughs> okay, so, uh, yeah, I, I have no fucking idea uh, <laughs> where, where we're going to go with this spur of the moment kind of thing. Um, you know, I wanted to share uh, this person uh, that I, I was recently led to through Genevieve. And I don't want to go on a whole freaking spiel about uh, Genevieve and just how uh, absolutely uh, beyond words uh, it is to experience uh, her gnosis, her her process. Yes, um, because I see things on. Uh, a lot of different spectrums, so I, I don't just see where someone's at, I see, you know, and this is just, I don't know, like, a lot of us, um, this is just kind of how, how we have, have always experienced things, is that, uh, whenever we peer, uh, into something, uh, what we see is not just the now, what we see what created the now and where that now is going we see the past that that led up into the fruition and then we see the projection if that makes any sense so uh, I, i've always seen the layers Uh, so yeah, thank you Genevieve for, for leading me to this person, uh, James True, I'll leave a link here for all of you, and, uh, yeah, then also, um, you know, I wanted to say, uh, Zen Atman, I, uh, I'm I'm right there with you, dude. Like uh, I've been, you know, sending you messages here and there about you know my uh, familiars, whatever you want to call them, companions. Uh, you know, it gets to a point where it's just, uh, you know, like you said, your your best friend. Uh, you know, and after I had my uh, first best friend, uh, familiar as in pet, uh, pass away, and um, of course, uh, his name was Zen, and this was before I found Zen Atman, so, uh, That, that was, I mean, there's no words, like, it's, it's completely gut-wrenching whenever you lose, um, a pet that you have spent, like, a large portion of your life with. And, of course, it depends upon the circumstances of how they pass. So, I mean, for me, it was not a good one. So, it, it, it dug in even deeper, like, the, like, you know, uh, it's like a fucking stabbing that happens in your gut, and then whatever, you know, the devil and the details, it just twists that fucker, and, uh, that's hard, it, it's fucking hard to, uh, heal from something like that, especially, and for me, I had to come to a realization that I was being a little too hard on myself, and that's just my life fucking story, really. A lot of us, it is, and we are kind of indoctrinated into this as well. To not see with a 2020 vision or a hindsight uh, clarity. So that we can see it for what it was, feel what we need to feel, and then 
the most important thing, the crucial thing, release it. Let it go. Let it go, dude. So, uh, Zen App Man, I am right there with you. Uh, I know you feel it. Uh, and uh, I, I told you that I have uh, my, my male cat that passed, Zen, uh, her sister. She's, she's right there. Uh, and there's no uh, coincidences here. That's the timing of it. Uh, and what you were describing with... Uh, serious um so i mean my cat she uh her name is Celine and uh yeah it's ooh, it's a ooh, uh, yeah fuck it's almost a blessing because like she's doing it slowly so i so i can adjust to it But, uh, yeah, like, they become so weak, like, uh, like newborns almost, you know, they, uh, come back to the cycle. But even in the weakness, like, there's still so much strength and, uh, agility and awareness, but, like, man... Oof, oh, yeah, I wasn't expecting to go into that, but, uh, so, I'll just share real quick, like, uh, how I'm dealing with it is that, um, I've already released, um, like, any kind of attachment or expectation, and so right now, um, you know, it's just guiding with grace and gentleness, you know, um, allowing her to pass how she wants to, where she wants to, if she's guided to go outside and pass in a certain location, like, I'm allowing that. If she wants to be in my lap and pass, then, um, I'm allowing that, but... Also, the, like, the not knowing when is, is, is also fucking hell. But, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm just encapsulating my love um, in, into uh, this. Immortalizing, if that's a word, uh, this this energy, which goes into all all the streams of uh, connectivity and beingness, of this level of respect, of love, and continuity, and not just that doesn't just go into uh, you know pets and their owners. But it goes into all levels of engagement and feeling with people. And plants and animals and all levels of engagement. Ooh, fuck. Okay. <sighs> so I'll share some of this and uh, we'll, we'll just see where we go. Can't play. Interesting. Ah, so I got to find it again. Hmm. But yeah, just just the other day, I found myself uh, saying "smooth criminal," like a criminal in the mind. That's where he was getting at here. I don't know if I'm able to find this or not. The greatest chunk that I've ever seen anyone try to take out. 
Ah, uh, look at that. Like, that's twice. Uh, what a coincidence, right? Twice that I just happened happened to stop right at it. Here's the Ark of the Covenant. But, but it's in the Bible. Yes, it is. But what's not in the Bible is the Great Pyramid. The Great Pyramid is not mentioned in the Bible. Just I'm just going to stop it right there. Just just let that sink in. You know, for all for all the people that are, are so into the Bible, and I don't, I don't discredit like uh, or take away anything from anyone. Like there, there's a lot of whenever I'm around someone that's so encapsulated into the Bible, I try to leave breadcrumbs about uh, the the esoterics that can be picked up upon. And, and not to be so caught up in the exoterics of it. The most amazing structure you can think of in those times is not mentioned in the Bible. Oh, well, James, maybe they just didn't see it, you know? Maybe they just didn't get around that much. Hey, that's it, you know? They were they were stupid Aramaic guys who know what they were doing. Right. No, that's not true. <laughs> The Heliopolis is in the Bible. It's about a day's hike north of the Great Pyramids. It's a day. So, I mean, obviously, there, there's... Um, if, if you haven't come to the realization, there, there's a purpose and reason and design behind literally every single thing. Um, first and foremost, that you have been led into believing that you need to put your awareness and intention attention into and then once you like are able to release that shit because that um, is enslaving you that kind of uh, mentality of being caught up into this kind of shit then you, you can uh, release back into nature and then I also wanted to say, I, I don't know if the person will uh, <laughs> see this at this point of the video or not, but uh, Chappelle, yes. Um, I saw your comment, yes. Like, uh, I, I uh, was coming from a place of, of recognition that, yes, you know, what you are saying, uh, obviously. But, you know, we have to, we have to differentiate what is um, man-made and the effects. We have to be able to realize the effects that that's having. So yes, obviously we we have to come to the realization that everything is from source. Everything is from God. Everything is beautiful. Yes, but look at the effects that things are having. So look at the effects of these uh, cities and, and the backwards corrupted system of, of Consumption and manipulation of energy. That's that's what I was getting at whenever I said uh, concrete jungles. I meant these 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 places where the energy is stagnant and uh, there is a flow, but it's 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 con completely controlled. At least they like to think that it is, for the most part. That's not to say that we can't bring the beauty back within the cities. But that's that's not going to be the process. But that's not for me to say any, and anyways. I can tell you uh, the process that's going to happen, but it doesn't matter what I tell you. What matters is what we make real for ourselves. What we choose to engage. Choice. Fucking choice. How we choose to manifest, what we choose to think about and engage in the moment, that's going to come to be. That's why it's so very important to get control of your fucking mind. Because that's everything. There's even a, a river. <laughs> you can actually take a river there. Why, why did the Bible cut out the pyramids? Why? Hmm. 
And I think that the answer is the truth of the coax. And, and just just to uh, say like what he means by that, like coax cables. So he's talking about like uh, the layers of like the uh, sheathing, uh, the the protective layers, and then you getting down to the uh, you know the the copper, the copper god, as he likes to say. So there's things protecting. Um, it's like like into an aura, an auric shield. So uh, it's manipulation of this connectivity, this continuity. This is what he keeps getting at. Like the Copper God, uh, they are manipulating the things around that source connectivity with the layers that they have manipulated around that. Yes, source is source, all is all. God is God, whatever you want to say. But, whenever you have been manipulated and indoctrinated into believing, the th layers built up around that, you start to associate with those fucking layers. And this is why um, this breakdown has to happen with people, where they have whatever needs to happen in their life to where they get closer and closer, they, they shed the layers of the bullshit of the indoctrina indoctrination and get closer and closer to the realization of the source of the center point the monad I, I think it, it ties into the Ark of the, of the Covenant I think that uh, probably what happened is is that humans were so cool we do what we always do talking about real cool humans, we plant uh, time capsules. You've seen it. You'll plant a time capsule, 20 years later you'll open it up, oh look, a magazine. Humanity is a reverence. Remember I told you that your life is as long as you're remembered? Humanity mm -hmm. is the Ark of the Covenant. It's our memory is the Ark. And probably what happened is that manna, this uh, compound that was found in the ark, along with Aaron's rod and the Ten Commandments, that manna was living memory. And this is like a, a whole nother fucking like series, just just a whole even just channel of going into the the, the memory. I, I did a video uh, on uh, memory, so, uh, yeah. And the living memory that, that is uh, existing within um, all life and um, the essence of purity and clarity within this purity and that you have access to all of it inside of you. It doesn't matter what you want to call it. The Akasha, Akashic Record. The, uh... Whatever. The Halls of the Menti. It doesn't matter. What matters is the engagement and then how you choose to make that real for you. Your, your level of engagement with it. So yes. Um, we're not to hold on to anything. Uh, the stories of the past. But we have to realize that we are not told we, we, <laughs> anything close to the truth. We are told aspects of the truth that are flipped and s misconstrued so that uh, we pour
pour our awareness and attention into um, a certain agenda and narrative. So where I'm coming from when I talk about understanding our true origins, and I think this is of the utmost importance, not to hold on to anything. That's not the fucking point. The point is to realize where we came from. And so that we can see with clarity where we are going. And that's not to say that we have to know, you know, the one doesn't depend on the other. But you have to have all points and perspectives of awareness in order to have a complete picture. Otherwise, we're going to keep shooting shooting blindly into the future, hoping that we uh, uh, come to some level of awareness and connectivity and realization. But, but in that false hope that, that most people you know, uh, get caught up within, within their uh, false trusting of uh, certain systems, You are allowing your awareness to be manipulated into some other agenda. Uh, so with our past, with Egypt, with uh, the pyramids, with the priests, um, and then, you know, uh, as above, so, be so below, even with aliens, what you may be um, led to believe about aliens. And then uh, most people are um, who are caught up in new agey stuff, or even not even caught up, but still um, in the aspect of uh, listening to channeled uh, material. And like I just said to someone recently, like, it doesn't matter, like, necessarily where a message is coming from what matters is the message and how it resonates with you but the problem is that we we choose uh we have been you know taught to attach a message to the messenger so uh aliens aren't what you think they are And it's not fucking all love and light, people. If uh, the things were allowed to happen that was going to happen, um, look up the series V. I think that's what it is. I don't know. I, I haven't watched anything for so long. Anyways, in that series, it's basically aliens coming down, saying, oh, hey, we have all this um, technology, all these answers to your problems, come to us. And in so doing, there, there's an enslavement happening. And that's, that's, what, that's what's happening right now, without the fucking aliens coming in. That's what's happening right now. Um, this is a... Uh, representation of uh, the manipulation that's happening as uh, as above so below this is exactly what's happening the design of the government is to get people to be dependent upon it and so they are not dependent upon themselves and do not have responsibility for their actions, for their thought. They are taught to listen to the media, to listen to the news, to give their energy and awareness and essence to the politics, to the 
governing bodies. To scientism. But all this is taking away from the quintessential essence of what you are. Your own unlimited energy source. That has been given to you. Whenever you came into embodiment. So how you choose to handle these energies. Is on you. Because you have been given a body that is limitless. How you choose to utilize this limitless body and create it into something that is not. Something that decays and dies and becomes weak. That's a mentality. And this is the reflection that happens of your mental state into your physical state. And uh, the shoe bread, the, the bread inside the tabernacle, there are 12 loaves of shoe bread that are distributed to uh, all the high priests. They're supposed to eat it. Uh, all these are made from yeast. And I, I believe, I, I can be wrong about this, pull my lips, but I believe that since yeast is the smallest living organism, yeast is actually a form of memory. What a coincidence uh, that I happen to uh, just, you know, stop stop on this section here. Whenever I was talking about fermentation and the microbes. Um, putting your memory into the microbes. It's not, it's not you know, he says yeast, but it, it's the process of fermenting. And the process of attuning your energy, your intent, and your essence into your food, into whatever it is. Uh, because you have to realize that all is food. You are always breathing and eating and consuming. And every time you open your eyes, you're... Ex exporting your your pushing the the push and the pull the balance and the flow we have to realize we have to realize what we are doing in every single moment and if we can come to grips with what is really real um, the lies that we have been uh, manipulated um, that we are living within the, the systems that, that we are still ha having to deal with right now um, where we can go to transform the system because there's avenues right now that's happening that's trying to trans not just transform the system but have the system transform itself. That that's the key here. We have to approach this not from a um, fight or flight perspective. It because it's neither. And and, and like, like I like to say, it's not an or thing. I like this or that. It's this and that. It, it's both. So it's. Realizing how to fight and flight in the same, it's, it's collapsing right? and it's uh, transforming those words into something new. So a new recognition and realization is happening right now of what we need individually and collectively to transform this fucking shit show into something that's really true and really fucking lasting. And yes, don't get caught up in the scripts. Don't get caught up in the stories. Release those. You have, we have to learn from them. And then release them. 
So uh, we can't skip 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 steps here, okay? Yes, do not hold on to shit. And if you, whenever you hold on to the things, uh, the stories, uh, the things that have uh, harmed you or that you you have perceived has, you know, brought you pain or trauma. We have to find our way through these uh, stories and these energies and emotions and find the release, find the pathway to where we can see with clarity why that needed to happen, all right? Because believe it or not, this was all very much needed. So, it is up to you how you choose to flow and navigate this process. <sighs> Alright, okay, so... I'll draw a card here to end it. Yeah, I didn't play much from this guy. I guess <laughs> this was basically just, uh, I don't know. To, to release, release some stuff. Uh, send love out as well let y'all know that what you're going through right now uh, you're not alone not by a long shot <laughs> interesting I always love it when I draw the aces of whatever degree it may be. Yeah, gotta get some light. Okay. There we go. The Ace of Pentacles, of course. Uh, fertility. That's beautiful. A golden pentacle encircled. By a garland of morning glories. Hangs above a meadow. The beauty of summer is illuminated by both the waning moon and full sun. The ancient yoni, a symbol of birth, serves as a gateway for the forces described by this card. The Ace of Pentacles begins the magical journey through the element of earth. Pentacles represent the material realm, money, possessions, home, the body, and nature. Like the dark loom of the earth, this card represents fertile ground. Seeds planted into it will grow into lasting achievements. Health, wealth, and comfort can be yours, for the Ace of Pentacles offers a path for your ideas to manifest into physical reality. Ground your ambitions into practical matters and prepare for prosperity as a vote of confidence. from the universe of a business 
or work opportunity presenting itself is presenting itself, it promises to be a success. The ace also invites you to contemplate the fundamental lesson of its suit that what is most sacred and magical can be found within ourselves and the very objects of the earth. You are called the sea, the divine in everyday life, and the pouring of tea at home as much as in the pouring of wine at the altar. You will be rewarded not only with material abundance, but also with an inner richness, a true prosperity of the soul. And that's really what it's all about. The recognition of a true wealth and happiness and where that comes from. It, it all, always, in all ways, stems from within first. And then the outer manifestations come to us. So yeah, I'll end it with that. Um, Thank you, thank you guys. Uh, th thank all of you for feeling. Thank you for feeling the real and doing whatever level of work that you can do uh, where you are at because that's where we have to. Everyone has to start from where they're at and you may not understand what that means but that's just simply a recognition that doesn't matter what you're going through, you can still begin there. You can still take the for that first step into a level of awareness, of integration, of an inner gnosis. One good foot in front of the other, so they say. Utilizing your power of choice to choose how you choose, <laughs> how you want to perceive and recognize and ultimately integrate keep on feeling the real I'm with you Peace.